Okay, this is the makeup meeting, Zoom meeting for Math 1401. Apologize for missing yesterday at 12, so I hold in a makeup meeting today. And hopefully some people will join us. Why don't we uh, just pick out, just, we'll just start covering uh, mean, median, and mode and go over the calculator again. Three one and three two section three point one about mean, median, mode. So let's see. Maybe I'll just uh, pick a problem page one. one. Oh, we have a participant, Miss Stiller. Appreciate you coming out today. Just noticed you. Uh, do you have anything uh, you want to ask about? Um, no, I don't have any questions. I was just going to sit in um, if you were going to review any problems or anything. Well, uh, yeah, now I, I don't want to bore the heck out of you, but basically I was just going to start from the beginning and go over how to do mean, median and mode on the calculator. Do you need uh, anything about that or do you need more stuff that was more it's advanced, but further on, like empirical rule or Chevy Chev, that kind of thing. Um, either one works. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start here. Uh, let's see. Why don't we, uh, page 119, I'll do, let's see, like problem 13. And this is uh, miles per gallon for a 2013 Ford Fusion or six randomly selected vehicles. So this is miles per gallon, 34, 33.2, 37, 29.4, 23.6, and 25.9. This is probably the limit of something you could do by hand, but certainly on a standard deviation, and they're not asking for that here, it would be a little overwhelming on a standard deviation to do by hand, so that's, why we teach everybody to plug in and we got good Wi-Fi working today, no real delays, it's a miracle. Uh, so we want mean, Dr. is gonna call that X bar, we want median, Dr. they referred to that as MED and there is no mode, you can see that instantly. There is not, everything here is listed twice, there's no repeats. And so we go stat, Hit enter on edit. You could punch over the numbers and that's fine. The only danger is if there's more numbers here than there are here and you forget to erase the extras. I'm just gonna hit go up to L1, clear and down. And then we just enter. Four, 3.6. I need to write down the directions again. Do I need to write down the directions again, or you think you've pretty well figured this out? Um, I don't think you need to. I think I got it. Thank you. Okay, sure thing. So now we're going to go to. Well, you don't have to write it. Oh, Miss Wisby's joined us. Yes. I, I didn't. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't need you to write it down. But can you just repeat it real quick for me? I, I'm. I'm entering it now into the calculator too. So. Sure thing. Instant replay. All right, we'll go stat. I apologize, um, uh, Sam. No, no, no problem at all. Um, yeah, okay. you, you, you start with the stat button. Clear off. Then you, when you want to enter numbers, you go to enter. Now I had old, I had old numbers, so. Do I need to clear mine off and re-enter or do you think? No, 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 no. I just need to get started. All right, no problem. But yeah, if you did, you'd go up to L1, hit clear and down and you'd flush the whole column. Then you can enter the numbers. And then once they're entered, it's back to stat. Over to calc. Are we too fast for you? Are you still entering numbers? I, uh, we can just go with the, what we have, <laughs> what I have. So you do the, 
you do stat and you enter the numbers. You hit one. Right. We'll catch up. Enter with, numbers. It's only six numbers if you want to catch up. It's okay. Like, All right, let, me let me know when you got them entered. 29.4, And 25.9. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got it. All right. So then uh, stat. Me hit stat again. Hit stat again. And now you want that calc word at the point because that's what's going to calculate your statistics. Okay. The right arrow over. Okay. And the only thing we're really going to use on this page is number one, one variable stats. So we get enter on that. And hit enter again to actually do it. And hmm. get two sheets of statistics or pages. This is page one, and you hit the down arrow and you get page two. Are you getting these okay. same numbers? No, oh, I did something wrong. Let me see. Hold on. Or I did. One of the other. If we don't agree, one of one of the other of us, we could go back and compare. Stat edit. Thirty-four, thirty-three point two. Thirty-seven, twenty-nine point four, twenty-three point six, twenty-five point nine. So sometimes you can be off, you know, a tenth of a digit or something and miss hit a digit. I may have entered it wrong because is it variable? Is it number one, the variable stat? Is that what we're, that's the answer yeah. we're trying to get? Well, we're, yeah, we're going to stat, calc, then number yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Don't really have any way to share what your calculator is showing. There's no way you'd have yeah, to. Yeah, I have the TI 84 plus CE. Mm -hmm. Right. And then since it's not in the software like my lab, there's no way for you to, to share it. You'd have to have a camera rigged like mine to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show me. But I guess. Fine, just keep working. It's, it's good. No problem. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it 30.52. Mean miles a gallon, and then the median would be on next page. Well, dog on. Okay. Okay, next page down and median 31.3. Uh, did not ask for shape, but just to cover that while we're here, do you do you see how you would tell shape? We went over this in the uh, Monday video. You have your mean and you have your median. And your mean is what to your median? Greater than, less than, or equal? Thirty here, thirty-one here. Your mean is what to your median? It is. Less than, greater than, equal? Not get any response. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we. I can hear you. Okay. Is the mean what to your median? Less than, greater than, or equal? Less than. It's clearly less than. Do you? Did we get across what that meant for the shape? Or should we go over that again? Could you explain that one more time, please? Okay, this one or kind of all three of them? There's three of them. No, I just meant um, what it means for the shape. Okay, well, like, like say there's there's three cases of shape. This is like the third one. Do you want to see all three? Yes, please. Okay, goodness. All right. So what happens is, start off with a bell. And remember, you're going to put the words mean median and mode on the curve. This is frequent. So what does the point at, at the peak here mean? It's the highest frequency or most frequent. Okay, so which word would we put at the peak? 
The median. Okay, well, we are going to put the median, but which word fit the most frequent? Uh, the mode. Mode. So, yeah, if it's truly symmetric, you got half your numbers this way, half your numbers that way. Half the numbers are above the median, half below. So, yes, the median will go at the same spot. And can you tell that? Again, if you get half above, half below, it's going to average to the mean as well. All three are equal. Equals median, equals mode, mode on a symmetric bell curve. I'm working my way to this. Have we gotten this across? Yes. Okay. Now, take a skew right. And what happens is you've got uh, a big outlier, one large outlier, a big outlier. You don't even have to, you know, maybe a couple. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to spread out the words. This spreads out. Words, mean, median, and mode. Can you tell which word stays at the peak? Yeah, I'm trying to very careful line up this blank with that peak. The no, mode. Uh, did I hear what? The mode. The mode. Still the most frequent. Now, I went through a big demonstration using weight data to try to demonstrate that one of these words will change more than the other. Did we get that across? Which word will change the most? Yeah, the mean would change the most. And so it's out in the tail and the medians in the middle. This is where the, the my lab uses that word resistant. The median is resistant. You're, you're trying to pull and pull and make it bigger, but the outlier just doesn't affect the median that much. It affects the mean a whole lot. So if the mean is greater than your median, your shape is skewed right. That's how you can tell the shape by just looking the mean and the median. Again, we're coming back to the what we started with, but let's do the third one. Skew left. Put the blank, usually use A, B, and B left to right. And then make sure you line one up at the peak. And which word stays at the peak? The mode. Mode. Okay. Which word changes the most? The mean. And which word, of course, changes the leak? Because the median is resistant. Median. And so your mean, less than your median, or we'll say if the mean is less than your median, you're skewed left. Okay, so back to problem 13. Which case is it? Our mean is clearly less than our median. So which shape would we have? We'd be? Skewed left. Skewed left. Not very hard. There can be different degrees of, you know, it's way less than you, you, you really see the skew. This is, I don't think it's even off a full point. <laughs> so it's a little hard to see the skew on this, but strictly speaking, it is skewed left. Have we gotten this across? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure thing. What uh, else can we show you? Uh, 
Um, maybe just keep going through problems. And then if I guess if we have any other questions, we'll ask as you go through them. Okay, well, that pretty much hits 3-1. There really isn't okay. anything else much in 3-1. It was about mean, median, mode and uh, how they define the shape. So then we went to 3-2, and that was about the spread of the data. They called it uh, dispersion, which hit range, standard deviation, and uh, variance. And then you brought in those other two things, the empirical rule and Chebyshev in three, two. I don't know if I can write all that down. So dispersion, all right, so that hit the range, standard deviation variance. And then there was an empirical rule and a Chebyshev inequality. Should we start with the basics again about range, standard deviation, and variance? Do, do you want to see anything off the MyLab problems? I didn't ask a whole lot out of the book. Did you, did you uh, mostly stuck to the MyLab problems? Did you want to see anything off the MyLab problems? Um, no, it's up to you. You can just go through all the topics, I guess. Okay. Well, I, since yeah, it's hard to go back and forth. Um, well, I was going to say after we're done with 3 1 and 3 2, I had some questions about um, test one. Sure thing. I don't know. Now, is this about your specific test grade? It's about a pro the problems. It's three problems that I got wrong that I want to kind of get your perspective on. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll be happy to do that if, if, if we can stick to just the questions. If it gets into your personal grade, I can send you a link to a separate Zoom private between us. No, no, I just want to, you know, see why, you know, it was, it's just true and false. I just, I want the problem to be discussed. I mean, yeah. at, at the end, so. Yeah, sure thing, be happy to do it. If, yeah, if we just stick to just the pure questions, I'd be happy to do it. All right, let's see. I don't know, I'll pick uh, page 135. Say, oh, it's the same. He repeats a lot of the same data. Uh, in, in number 11, he's repeating the same data for the miles per gallon for your Ford Fusion. So you got 34, 33.2, 37, 29.4, 23.6, and 25.9. But now he wants range, uh, sample variance, Sample standard deviation. Okay. Did we get across? You can't do the range directly on the calculator. You can uh, basically, you want max minus min. Highest number here looks like a 37. And the lowest number looks like 23.6. And you want to actually subtract. We don't mean just, you know, spot the two ends. You want one single number. Thirteen point four. Any questions about that? No. Okay. Do you know how to read these two things? Now, actually, you, you cannot read this off the calculator. You cannot read variance off the calculator. Off calculator. You can read this, the, the sample standard deviation off calculator. It will be called, since it's a sample on the calculator, it'll be called the SX. The calculator sticks an S by it. S for sample and uses an X. Uh, since we've already entered this data, I guess I'll have to get back to it. Uh, let's see, stats, calc, real stats, enter. 
and you read me what the number is for sample standard deviation. You have any idea I can pull mine up? Do you see which line would give you the sample standard deviation? Anybody tell me? I've got to get my book pulled up. Okay. Well, can you see it's the SX? Five point one three. Now, is that just some random gibberish number that you have no clue what the heck that means, or would you be capable of? saying in a short sentence exactly what that means, just like I would? Or do you need me to explain what that means? Uh, could you explain it, please? Yes, please. Oh, goodness. OK. Well, you need the mean, so I'll rewrite that. The mean was uh, 30.52. This is the average. Distance, we'll use the word distance, even though it isn't a real physical distance. The standard name for it is deviation, change. You could say average change of each data value from the mean. All right, so you see how 34, you're what, four above, about roughly four above, 33, you're roughly you know, three above, uh, 23, you're like seven below, 20, about five below, maybe six or four below here. So being four above, three above, seven below, four below, those changes average out to 5.13. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. Do you then know how to use this number and get to variance? Or do you Can you go over it, please? It would be called the SX squared. And they don't do that. They don't read that number for you off the calculator. So you would, in this case, take 5.13 squared. Again, you get a little round off area. It gets a little fuzzy depending on round off area squared. 26.32. And we're not going to do anything with that number if you went on and took further classes in this thrilling subject statistics, they would explain and do more with that number, but we're just computing it. So I guess when you show up there, you'll know, oh yeah, variance, yeah, I know how to compute it. Don't know, we didn't do anything with it, but I know what it is and I know how to compute it anyway. Questions about that? All right, well, that hits the first uh, three, range, standard deviation, and variance. Do you want to go on and um, do an example of, say, empirical rule and Chebyshev? The book doesn't have a lot of examples of these. The My Lab had a lot more examples or practice problems in empirical rule and Chebyshev. The book had, like, has one practice Chebyshev. That isn't enough practice. They've got a two or three empirical rules, but the MyLab had much more practice. You want to see an example of each? Or? Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, we'll go with the empirical rule first? Why don't we try page one thirty seven, problem twenty nine. Right, and this is about Stanford Binet intelligence quotient test, your standard IQ. They say it's bell shaped with a mean of 100, standard deviation of uh, 15. 
All right, let's stop there and see if you understand what that means when they tell you it's bell-shaped. So 29, your mean is 100, mean IQ is 100, standard deviation is 15, bell-shaped. You understand what being bell-shaped tells you? These are high IQ people, low IQ. There are just as many geniuses in the world, high IQ geniuses in the world, as there are, well, I don't want to insult anybody or anything, um, uh, challenged people. Try to be as politically correct as I can. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. The number of people with high IQs is about the same as the number of people with low IQs. They just tested and tested people over the years and basically figured that out. Okay, so part A, what percent have IQ scores between 70 and 130. Now, is this an absolutely obvious question or do you need my thrilling explanation? I think I understand how to do that. Thank you, okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Well, okay because I haven't worked the problem. So let me, what can we assume is the low IQ? Is it 70 and then the high is 130? Uh, for this example, yes, what they've asked about. Now, where you get the percent from, there is a tail, this is called the empirical rule. And there is a table. And we called it a K value and we use integer values right now. One, two, three, and 68, 95, and 99.7. Now, do, do I need to explain that table or is that table obvious? It's from calculus. Okay, well, I guess you need to explain. I didn't, I didn't do calculus. I did up the trick, so I don't know calculus. Okay, well, we're not going to show you the calculus here either. These are just the answers. And it just simply means that if you go out one standard deviation, either direction, you will find 68. You can calculate that there will be 68% of the numbers. Okay. If you go out to two standard deviations, you can calculate from calculus that there will be 95% of the numbers within two standard deviations. And if you go out to three standard deviations, you can calculate that there'll be 99.7% of the numbers. You, I would say you'd have to memorize it. In a regular classroom, you'd have to memorize this online. I can't make you memorize it. But you need to know it when it says empirical rule, that they're following this table. Are we okay. ready to go? Yeah, are we ready to go on and figure out what percent? Yes. Okay. You lay it out on a number line. You, you lay all these problems out, Shebyshev or empirical rule here on a number line, and you stick your mean which happens to be 100 in the center. And then you try to figure out, see this coefficient, this one, two, or three is called your K value. Number of standard deviations away from your mean. That's our first letter. Chapter seven, we're gonna use the letter Z and chapter eight, we're gonna use letter T, maybe chapter nine. So the trick is, what is our K value? 
it has to be one, two, or three. So what I'm going to do is work my way up to it. My standard deviation is 15. If I add one standard deviation of 15, do you see what number goes here? This is one times 15, but that's not the number that goes here. Uh, yeah, I am. What, what's up? Okay. Do you see what number goes here? Or is it a total bafflement? I'm getting silence again. It's so easy, it's hard. Well, is it 101? Point one five? No, that's 15. 115, right? 15, yes. Yeah, okay. At an IQ of 115, you're one standard deviation above the mean. All right, now you see I haven't worked my way to 130 yet. So 130 is not one standard deviation above the mean. You see that? Yes. So I add one more standard deviation to get you to two. And 115 plus 15 is? 130. 130. So a person with an IQ of 130 is two standard deviations above the mean. These are K equal two numbers. And you could go backwards, but they usually give it symmetric. So you don't really have to uh, go backwards. And you can almost see it in your head. Two standard deviations is 30, 100 minus 30 is 70. So given that this is a K equal two interval, what is the percent? 95%. 95% of the people will have IQ scores between 70 and 130. In effect, on this scale up here, your 100's in the center, and you're at 130 at two standard deviations, and you're at 70 down here at two standard deviations below. Do you want to see B or C? Yes. Yeah. If you look at B, what percent? Less than 70 or greater than 130? I'll redraw the line. Mean is 100. 130, then you're at 2. And uh, negative 2, you're at 70. And we know we've got 95% between those. But they're at less than 7. They want to know about this or greater than 130. They want to know about this. The secret you need, maybe I'll rewrite the 95 down here. The secret you need is that what is the overall percentage? What is the whole? A whole would be 100%, right? Yes. So what do I do to get out? Say so if I got 95 in the middle, what would be on both ends? What would I do with 100 to 95? Wait, sorry, can you say that one more time? You cut out. Okay, no problem. If there's 100 on the hole and 95 in here, what would I do with 195 to get to this? You'd subtract 95 from 100? Bingo. So my answer is that there's going to be 100 minus 95, which equals 5%, less than 70, greater than 130. 
5% of the population are genius or at the not genius, let's say. Do you want to see part C? Yes. If works off the same thing in part C, what percent greater than 130? Basically, the right side, just the right side. Well, remember it's symmetric, it's equal. This percentage here equals this percentage. So if there's 5% total, what do you think I gotta do? My answer. What do we think I gotta do to get greater than 130? Maybe figure out what less than 130 is and then subtract it. Well, if I got 95 in the middle and five here and here, what do you think I got on each end? 2.5. Divide by two, right. Two and a half percent. So you'd have two and a half here two and a half here, that adds up to your five, 95 in the middle, there's your 100%. This is the kind of stuff they want you to do. Do you wanna see a Chevy Chev example? Yes, please. All right. I can say there's only one, uh, one odd one anyway. There's an even one, but one odd one. It's 35. Back in December of 14, this could be an old book. Average price was 306 per gallon, standard deviation 0.06. I'm gonna answer the following. This is, uh, maybe I'll start a fresh sheet. 38, 35, mean 0.06, standard deviation 0.06. What minimum percent of gasoline stations add prices within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, this is called the Chevy Chef problem. Okay, I tried to explain in the other video the table for it as just a two and a three. And the formula for it is one minus one over K squared. You can do two in your head, two squared is four, one minus a fourth is three fourths, which is 75%. And this one worked out 88.9%. Again, in the regular class, you'd have to memorize this, but you know, online can't make you do that. These are minimum percentages. It's universal truth that for any random set of data, a minimum of 88.9% of them will lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So that's what they asked for in part A. What do you think the answer is? So easy, it's hard. 88.9%. 88.9%. Should I put a whole bunch of these on the test? 
Yes, please. I had to lay awake all night thinking about that, I bet. Now B shifts to one and a half standard deviations. What percent within, shortening it up, 1.5 standard deviations? All right, well, I won't redo the table up here, but I'll use 1.5 here, and the formula would go 1 minus 1 over k squared, which would be 1 minus 1 over 1 1.5 squared. Ah, I got to turn the calculator on. Uh, maybe you can see both. 1 minus 1 divided by 1 1.5 squared. We'll call it 55.6. But if you use 55.5, you know, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm not going to do a true or false on something that fine a detail that yeah, I use 55.6 and so I'm true, but you use 55.5 and so I'm going to call it false. I'll, I'll make it much more obvious than that. I, I won't get that ticky on the true or false. So, Okay, can you now answer our question here? What percent within one and a half standard deviations? So 55.6%. 55.6%. Then they ask, what are the gasoline? No, 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 I'm sorry. That's, these are not gas prices. What am I doing? No, 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 wait, wait, 36. Okay, 35, we're doing 35. Um, oh, dad, gum, I'm sorry. Am I confusing the heck out of you? I dropped to two and I dropped to 36. 35 should have used two and a half. Am I confusing the heck out of you? No, it's okay. Okay, well, let, me, let me use two and a half and get the correct answer down. That'd be one minus one over 2.5 squared, doggone. Uh, one minus one divided by 2.5 squared. I, I looked at 36, it's 84% for 35. 55.6 for 36. So it's actually 84%. And this should have been two and a half. Looked at the wrong problem. Okay, all right, do you want to, uh, let's see, finish B. What are gas prices within 2.5 standard deviations of the mean. Eighty-four percent. Well, that's the percentage, but that's not the gas prices. Okay. It's, yeah, there's a distinction. So you sketch it out. Your mean is three point oh six, and you want to go two point five standard deviations up and 2.5 standard deviations down. Now that S is 0.06, I got it off the page. That S is 0.06 by itself. So this literally does mean 2.5 times 0.06 and negative 2.5 times 0.06. But do you understand that is not the number that goes here. You see a 2.5, you take 0.06 times 2.5, it's gonna be way less than 3.06. Right, so you would have to add it to 3.06. Bingo. Or subtract it on the other side. Subtract it on the other side. Bingo. That's exactly right. 3.06 and add 2.5 times 0.06. And you know how to call that back if you get that number? You call it back, you know, all you got to do is change the plus to minus. You don't have to punch the whole thing again. Do you, you know that trick? We got yes. Got 3.06 and add times 0.06. 3.21. And all I got to do is call it back, go over, put a minus over that plus. Oops, I somehow put it in. How did I do that? Delete the plus. Oh, I overwrote the six, sorry. So I insert the six. I'm making this a lot more complicated than usually. Now I think I finally got it. 2.91. The answer, 
2.912, And those are the gas prices within two and a half standard deviations of the mean. Okay. Do you want to see part C? I, I have a question about the calculator. How did you recall? I don't know that trick. trick. Second enter. All right, so let's say I got the minus, I've got the minus one in right now. Second is that blue key, enter at the bottom. Calls back the last thing you punched, second enter. Actually, if you keep hitting second enter, call back like the last 10 things you punched. But if you just- Okay, thanks. Um, and so all I gotta do is go over and make the change I need. In this case, minus the plus, enter again, press the. So yeah, nice trick. Saves a lot of punching. That's helpful. Thank you. Uh -huh. Are we ready for part C? Yeah. Okay. So C wants the minimum percent with prices, I'm off the page, prices between 2.94 and 3.18. Okay, so mean is 3.06, standard deviation 0.06. 3.18 will be out here somewhere. 2.94 will be out here somewhere. Remember, you're following this table. 2, 3, 75, 88.9. Do you see the useless crap I have in my head? I have cluttered my brain cells with this useless crap. Actually, they pay me money to have that useless crap in my head. Okay. Do you see the minimum percentage has got to be one of these two numbers? Yes. So you got to figure out which one it is. And so again, I would start by adding your standard deviation to the mean. So if I add it once, you could punch it out on a calculator. Can you see that's going to be 3.12? Yes. That would be one. So I'm not there yet. Add it again, and can you tell at 3.12, add 0.06? Yeah, that'll get me to 3.18. 1.8. So 3.18 is a two standard deviation number. Looking at the table, which percentage is it? 75%. 75%. Bingo. Do these go in the category they look so easy when I do it? Yes. For me, yeah, for me, yeah. Okay. Well, that pretty much covers everything that's in these two sections. Did you want to go over your uh, test problems? Yes. Yeah, I don't have the test in front of me. Is there any way to read me the problem or? Are you, are you calling it up? I don't know if you're talking to me, but your mic is showing muted. Yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I unmuted. Okay, okay so um, number 10. Okay. I, I have a problem with the school right in school left, but it says Bill Gates would school an income distribution of our stat 2400 class to the left. Will 
skew income to the left. Okay, see the, my mindset, and that's what I tried to explain in the instructions, is that like I took this test and I put down some correct answers and some incorrect answers. And so my idea was to have you grade me. So this was a true or false, right? Yes. How did I answer? I don't have it in front of me. You put false. You I circle put false. false. Yeah. Okay. Do you see that that is a correct answer? No, because I put, well, yeah, I know I don't because how I had it food. Well, I don't, I don't get the, the, the food right and left. I mean, my brain or something, how I'm thinking, it, it just doesn't work for me. So, okay. So what I do is try to sketch it out and I put what we're talking about, which is income here on the bottom axis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can imagine it being symmetric, which is just as many rich people, high income as low income, poor people. Right, I did that. Mm -hmm. So Bill Gates, super rich, he's gonna right. be way out here, mm -hmm. way rich. Mm -hmm. And that's what extends him to the right, making it a skew right. He's got. Oh, I was thinking not Bill. I was thinking our class. Well, which our is class. Why you know, if most average people would be skewed left. I mean, you know, the income. But because you threw him in there, you're saying that it was skewed right. He skews it right. If I don't right. know what he, a year, he might make a billion a year. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Average a billion a year for him. And I don't know what the rest, I don't want to in, insult anybody in the club. Maybe we all make 30,000 a year or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have 30 people making 30,000 a year, that average is 30,000. And he makes a billion a year. You see what he does to the mean income? <laughs> mm -hmm. But he doesn't change the median income much at all. It's the only average of one of us or I'm sorry, you know, the, the middle of one of us or the average of two in the middle. But yeah, he, his income is so much greater than everybody else. That's a skew to the right. So the correct answer to this question is false because he skews it to the right. This is false. Right, okay. So then the way I've worded the answer form is true. The problem is correct. That's why you needed to think in terms of is the problem correct or incorrect? Right, right. I get that. It's just my head. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Never mind. Okay. I mean, no I, can't, I can't really explain this. <laughs> Good thing, no problem. Sometimes you, you, right. you got to go over it and happen to miss it on a test to, to really truly learn it or, you know, something. Right, okay. Uh, is there another one? Yeah, the next one is 11 and it has on here, um, in a random sample, every element in the population does not have an equal chance of being selected. Right. And you select it false. Right. Every element, well, every element, Mm -hmm. In the population, mm, population doesn't have is, does not have an equal chance of uh, being selected. Again, I'm trying to answer this. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the issue is, did I answer it correctly? Does not have an equal chance of being picked or selected. Right. In a random selection. Right. So how did I answer this? A this random question. sample. Right. So how you, did I answer this? You answered it as false. Okay. Do you see that that is correct? No, I don't. Because <laughs> okay. I mean, to me in a random sample, again, like I said, I must be getting in my head too much. Um, we, if, you know, you look, if you look at the definition of it, we said in a random sample, every element did have an equal chance. Okay, well, that's why. I know it's the English part of the class and you can play games with the words. I just, oh, yeah. the word, I just split, slipped the word not in. 
I, I can, well, I don't know if I can call it, find it real quick in the book, but if, if the sample is truly random, they've blindly closed their eyes and just randomly picked. Yeah, and it is number six. And I don't know how I screwed that up. Yeah, you have as a definition when you wrote them out, random sample, every object in the population has an equal chance of being selected. That was a, that was a, that was a give me one, a give me. Okay. No <laughs> um, really quick, I have to go, but thank you for the Zoom today. Sure thing. Well, thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. Bye. 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 Okay, and then the other one, the other uh, other one that I um, had a question about was Pareto chart has bars in it's the cool. bar graph, right? Listed in order from least greatest, right? Orders. Why did I get that one? Bars <gasps> from least. So in this wording, you can picture it that it would look like this. All right, so I had a true or false, which, how did I answer? You answer false. Okay, do you see that this is correct? It's probably a definition that I overlooked. That's probably in, in the, my notes and for some reason I just, I don't know. I, I can pull it up, but a Pareto chart ordered it from greatest to least. Mm -hmm. I can I can pull it up out of T1. Here. Okay, it's from greatest to least. That, yeah, the little word things. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was it, really. Okay. Um, is there any? Is I, ha I haven't been keeping, I haven't been in the email um, much today. Okay. Did you send out the spreadsheet yet, or have you, are you still composing that? I'm, I'm still working on the spreadsheet grade report. Okay. And I'm still working on the quiz. Um, you yeah, mean the te from test one though? The, the grade report from test one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have not mailed out a full grade report. Okay, sure. Okay, great. That's what I was checking. Okay, thank you. Okay. And that's all I have. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Oh, sure thing. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for doing it. Bye. Thanks.